Happy Monday, Salon Spa and Beauty Professionals. It is Katie here coming at you live for the usual for this Monday night free training. I hope you are all having a fantastic kickstart to your week. I can't wait to deliver you this awesome lesson today that I think you are gonna find super impactful that is going to just whip your butt into shape, which needs to happen sometimes. So that's what we're gonna be doing uh, this week. If you are catching me live, be sure to hashtag live down below in the comments. If you are catching that replay, be sure to type in hashtag replay down in the comments below. That way I know who is joining me and I can chit chat directly with you. Also, if you are new to the group or this is your first live stream with me ever, please, please, please comment below who you are, where you're from, and what you do so I can get to know you, put a face with the name, put a service with the name, and know all about you, okay? So go ahead and comment those things down below, and then once I see some people on, we will get started. I see we got three people on so far. Welcome, welcome, welcome. One moment, I am going to refresh my computer screen so I can pull up all of your comments on my computer. I don't have to crank my, my old eyes and stare at the uh, phone screen the whole time. And I can see all of your comments rolling through. We almost there. Computer likes to go slow. But like I said, comment below, hashtag live, if you are catching me live, and comment down below, hashtag replay, if you are catching that replay. So my computer's frozen just a little bit, but there we go, now we are up and running. With that said, you guys, topic of this evening, the number one thing your cosmetology school did not teach you that will unlock your success as a salon and spa, <coughs> oh, if I can talk today and not choke on myself, professional is the word that was supposed to come out. Um, so the number one thing your cosmetology school did not teach you or your training or your certification or wherever you went to learn about your service did not teach you that will unlock your success as a salon and spa professional, something that is crucial to the success of every single person in this industry, regardless of what service you do. I see we have Ebony on with me and TJ as well. Hi, you guys. How are you doing tonight? Hope you are pumped for this live. With that said, um, just to reiterate a few things before we get going and before we dive into it. First and foremost, I am here every single Monday for you guys at 8 p.m. You should be here for yourselves too, okay? It doesn't matter if it is a holiday week. It does not matter if the world is ending. You should be here learning how to grow your business, putting in those reps, putting in that time to ensure that you can achieve success. This is a free asset to you that is available to you and your business every single week. So if next week you are struggling and you're like, damn, damn, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm struggling, the whole world's against me. I ain't got no clients. And you ain't showing up to these lives every week. Girl, you better hush your mouth and show up to these lives, okay? Because they will change your life. I'm telling you, right here, right now, okay? So be sure that you are showing up, especially if you are struggling in your business right now, okay? That is prime time to show up to these lives with Katie Lynn White. Um, so with that said, additionally, if you find things in this live training where you're like, oh, I want a little more info on that. I wonder if Katie has a resource for this. Where is that training? Where is this training? How can I get more info on that strategy? Things like that. You can hashtag elite down below in this live stream at any point in time during the live. And one of my assistants will reach out to you and make sure that you're hooked up with anything you need in order to be successful. I see we got Melissa Davis on as well. Like I said, you guys comment hashtag live down below if you are catching me live and hashtag replay down below if you are catching that replay. Cool, cool, sweet, sweet, awesome. With that said, Without further ado, let's go on and dive into the topic. The number one thing your cosmetology school didn't teach you that will unlock your success as a salon and spa professional. Here's the thing. Go ahead and comment down below how much money you spent in order to get your certification that you have right now. Literally, how much money did you spend in order to achieve whatever certification it is for whatever it is that you do? Okay, whether you went to cosmetology school, you went and did uh, private trainings in order to learn things like microblading, lashes, etc. How much money did you spend in order to learn your craft? Go ahead and comment that down below. I'll wait for a few of those to come in because I want to know. I want to make sure we're on the same page about this. I see we've got 
Misa on, uh, or Mila, Emily, Jamie, Rena, Vlad. <laughs> Ebony said she spent a lot on her training. I have a feeling like that's gonna be a theme. Uh, we, we spend a lot to learn what we know, right? To be an expert in what we do, whether it be waxing or nails or lashes or hair or aesthetics, etc. We spent a lot of money and put in a lot of work and a lot of hours to be an expert at what we did, right? Melissa said she's still spending thousands of dollars on her education. But what these people don't tell you, what they don't teach you, is they'll tell you everything about the service itself, right? They'll tell you everything about how to cut hair just right, how to do the perfect balayage, how to clear up acne at the drop of a hat. I see one person spent $300,000. Mila said thousands if you had hotel and flights. Carolyn said thousands and thousands. Emily said 8,000 for school, 5,000 plus for extra training. Jamie said thousands over 21 years. You spent a lot of money, right? But it's like, you spent a ton of money doing it. You spent a ton of money learning it. Then it's time to actually go make money with it, right? And then there's that, oh shit moment. That like, oh crap, what, what did I get myself into? Because how do I make money with this, right? How do I get clients with this? Do I go work for someone else first? Do I go off on my own first? What does that look like to go off on my own? What, what, what other resources, what other things do I need in order to go off on my own and do what I need to do? It's like we, we get really excited. We get, we get educated on the service. We know exactly what we're doing. We're even an expert in our field. But if we can't tell other people and convince other people that we are an expert in our field, no one will want to come to us, right? We could be the person who could end global warming. But if we can't convince other people that we are an expert in that space, no one's going to give us the time of day, right? It's the same thing with your service. You can be an expert all day long. You can have the, the most premium education ever. You could have spent $300,000 on everything that you do and learn and all of that. And at the end of the day, if you can't convince other people that you are an expert at what you do, you will still fail, okay? The common misconception around your, your license is that if I'm licensed, people automatically have to believe I'm good at what I do. If I'm licensed, then I'm worth it. Then I can charge my worth. Then I can know my worth because I'm licensed, right? When that is 110% not the case, because there's tons of people out there with licenses in every single one of your fields who do some jacked up work, right? I think we can all agree on that. Like how in the hell did you get your license, right? Uh, so just that license to the end consumer, to a client like me, it doesn't mean much anymore. You have to convince me that you can solve my problem and my needs and my wants and my desires, okay? Because your license sitting on a shelf or your certification sitting on a shelf does not prove to me that you can fix my problem. That's cool and all, I'm glad you got the legal certification, but that's the bare minimum, okay? It does not prove to me that you can solve my problem. So the one gritty aspect that it takes to prove to a potential client that you can solve their problem, to get them to actually come in your doors and pay you money for all this knowledge that you invested thousands on thousands on thousands of dollars to learn is sales, okay? And that is consistent on whether or not you work for someone else or you own your own business. If you do not have a sales mentality, you will not be successful, period. The end. You will not achieve whatever definition you have of success in this business if you do not have a sales mentality. And what I, I don't mean the whole car salesman, sleazy sales tactics that everyone thinks of when they think of sales, right? How many of you have said, type a one down below if you've said before, the words have come out of your mouth, I don't wanna come across as salesy. Type a one down below if that is something that has come out of your mouth before. That is fundamentally flawed, okay? Fundamentally, you being a business owner and engaging in business, saying you don't want to be salesy is fundamentally flawed because without sales, there is no business. Without sales, you do not have a business. You can have all the knowledge in the world. You can have all the expertise in the world. 
You can be literally the Galileo of aesthetics. And if you don't know how to sell your service or sell your retail, you will be a failure at the end of the day. You will have no clients to serve. No one will trust you except for maybe referrals and friends and family and the few clients who are willing to just come over and give you a try. If you don't know sales, you will not be successful in any business, okay? That's not even just confined to this industry. That's across the board. If you own multiple businesses, if you're in an MLM, if you don't know how to sell, you will not be successful, okay? So we need to throw out the mentality. Jamie, Ebony, Emily, Mila, and TJ, all of you typed a one. We gotta throw out that I don't wanna be salesy mentality. You gotta just put it in a box and get rid of it, okay? It's one thing, obviously, to not wanna come across as a used car salesman, duh. No one wants to come across as that, right? But you do still have to train and engage in sales on a day-to-day -day basis if you are gonna find success in your business. You should be actively hunting down sales-related trainings for yourself, for your staff, for your team in order to raise your numbers. Because that is the gateway to charging what you're worth, right? Because, you know, we, we hear all the time like, oh, the clients are just cheap, you know? The clients, they just don't wanna pay me my worth. They just want, you know, this whole job for a hundred bucks and they, they just don't wanna pay me my worth. When in reality, the issue is not that the client is not willing to pay you your worth. The issue is you failed to sell the client on the value of your worth, okay? Because if they can go down the street and get the same color job for $75, they're gonna keep doing that unless there's a reason yours is better. And explaining that reason in a way that convinces the client that that is better and that that is the correct choice is sales. <laughs> it is sales. And you have to engage in that if you are ever going to charge what you worth and what you are worth and stop being a bottom feeder of the industry, okay? Type a two down below if you're sick and tired of being a bottom feeder of the industry. We don't want the, the cheap clients. We don't want the people who are just, you know, scraping by, who are just, you know, coming in like last minute type of clients. We don't want those worst clients. We don't wanna be a bottom feeder. We wanna be a top dog. We wanna be a shark, right? But if you're gonna be a shark, if you're gonna get the good clients, the clients that are willing to spend the dough, to spend that cash money, you have to engage in sales or you won't be able to score those clients. Given that, there are three myths that I wanna go over with you guys tonight that I've heard across this industry time and time and time again that we have just got to stop thinking about, okay? First and foremost, which was the basis of what everyone teaches you in cosmetology school practically and all of your certifications, build it and they will come. If you just open your doors and you provide a certain service, they will come. Maybe, you know, you have to obviously have your social media and market a little bit, but other than that, they'll just come and they'll pay you and you'll be fine. They'll come, they'll give you money, you'll provide a service and that's how it works, okay? No. You have to go get the clients. You have to go out in your local community and be meeting people, whether that be online, in person, etc. You have to engage in starting those relationships first, especially when you're first starting out. Build it and they will come is a lazy mentality to have. And it's something that almost every single cosmetology school instills into you guys that, oh yeah, if you'll just, you're just a service provider. That's all it is. No, you're a business owner. And as a business owner, you are responsible for getting in front of your local community and building relationships inside of your local community in order to harvest new clientele coming in, okay? So if you ever said build it and they will come, get it out of your mentality. If you've ever heard that, get it, get it out. Whoever said it, just cancel them out of your life because they're stupid. <laughs> I'm kidding. But still, like, no. Build it and they will come is a flawed mentality. Number two, my area is the reason I'm not growing. There's too much competition here, or people here don't spend money, or it's too small of an area, things like that. Again, kick it out, okay? Out of here. No, completely flawed mentality. We have, 
We have people in Taos, New Mexico pulling off $1,000 days as solo estheticians. Taos, New Mexico has like 5,000 people in it, okay? Your area is not the problem. Oh, I can't charge that much because, you know, everyone in my area charges X amount. Again, we have another solo stylist in Ohio who previously was charging, scraping by bottom dollar for her balayage services because there's so many people in her area who were charging that. Guess what I did? I made her raise her prices. Guess what? She got 50 new clients in the last 30 days. She was previously only doing like $200 a week. She's now doing almost $1,000 every two to three days, by the way. 50 new clients exponentially grew her business at a higher price point in her area because it's a flawed mentality, okay? Your area is not the reason you're not growing. Are there living, breathing human beings in your area? Yes or no? If yes, then your area is not the reason you are not growing. Then your area is not the reason why you are not achieving what you want to achieve in your business. You have to go secure your portion of the marketplace. You have to go secure your portion of the market. It's on you. You have to go get those clients. You have to make them see your worth. You have to sell them on why you are different and better and worth that value than any other person in your area, right? It doesn't matter if there's a salon on every corner. Be the better salon. Be the one who's better at sales. It's not all about the better service, I'm telling you. I actually have continued to go back to a nail salon that is messed up two or three times because they provide an immaculate experience for me and they have showed me why they are worth what they are. They've had a couple of mess ups, but considering the immaculate service and experience and how good they are at selling me on why they are worth it, I go back time and time again. If they mess something up, we get it fixed. They don't have the best quality product in the area because that's not what it's about. It's about being able to build that relationship with your clients and sell them on your worth, 110%. And then the third one, which is the bane of my existence, is everyone's a discount shopper. Everyone wants a deal. Everyone wants a discount. I can't find anyone willing to pay me my price. No, you just can't sell people on why you are worth your price, okay? Here's the thing. Money is a tool for survival. Money is a means to survival. We use money to purchase things like food, like shelter, like water. Innate human, human nature, if I can talk tonight, innate human nature, ugh, human nature, if I can spit that word out, is to keep your resources tight, right? Money is a resource for survival, you don't want to go around just spending all your money. It's a means to survival. Any logical human being is not going to just go pay a higher price because it might be a better quality product or it might be a better quality service. They're not just going to go do it. They're not just going to agree to it without putting up a little bit of a fight, right? No. If all you are selling is the surface level service, I do waxing. I do nails, I do hair. If that's all you're selling and that's all you're worth, then yeah, they're going to gravitate towards the lower price. You have to sell them on why you are worth more. You have to sell them on why you should be paid your worth because otherwise they will gravitate towards the discounted price or the lower price. It's human nature, it doesn't make that person cheap. As a matter of fact, people with more money are usually the ones searching for the bigger deals. They didn't get rich by going around and spending all their money. That's why it's a very, very flawed mentality to sit there and be like, well, I want you know, the rich moms that stay at home and have a CEO for a husband as my ideal client. That's my ideal client, and if a woman doesn't fit that criteria, then she's not my ideal client. No, your ideal client is someone who has a problem you can solve, who you can convince of that investment with. That is your ideal client. You need to search for your ideal clients by the problem they have, not by the money you think might be in their bank account. 
because everyone in this industry, I'm just telling you right now, thinks they want to go after the stay at home soccer moms with CEO corporate husbands. Everyone, every single one of you, every time I ask any of you who your ideal client is, that's literally the explanation I get is, yeah, it's like the stay at home moms who have lucrative money, who did it that like everyone's going after that market because we all think that they have money. Okay. When in reality, half those women, <laughs> their husband has them on a tight budget and goes, you better not spend it over this, right? If we keep going after that market, yeah, that market's gonna get dried up. And it's just because we think they have all the money and that's not true, okay? I shared this last week, I'll share it again. We, myself and Jordan, were only making like two to $3,000 a month when we invested over $2,000 in his skincare to solve a problem. By anyone's means, by anyone's definition, we were not their ideal client. We were not the ones who were supposed to have that kind of money in order to invest to solve a problem, but we did. Why did we do it? Because there was an esthetician who sat there, got raw and real with us, did a kick ass consultation and was able to convince us and sell us on herself. She didn't sell us on a service. We had no clue what service we were going to be getting into. We had no clue that it, whether or not it was gonna be micro needling or a chemical peel or anything like that. We had no clue what the service was gonna be. She sold us on the transformation. She sold us on the fact that she could solve the problem. And we said, all right, we're in. Whatever the price is, we'll pay it, we are in. And guess what? She solved the problem and we paid her the money <laughs> in order to solve the problem, right? It's not always about the service. As a matter of fact, it rarely should be. You have to solve a problem, okay? Think of nails. I don't get nails because I just want nails. I get nails because I have man hands and the dirt gets underneath my fingernails and it makes me look like a dude and I don't like it and I have little meaty fingers and they're not very long. And to be frank, it makes me feel a lot more feminine when this nail makes my finger look longer. I don't get nails just to get nails. I get nails because they solve a problem. I want them to look nice. I want them to look feminine. I want them to be kept up with. So I want to be on a regimen for that. I want my cuticles not to look busted a week after I leave the nail salon. Same thing with my feet. I am hard on my toes. Let me tell you, okay? I run into everything. I jam my toes 24 seven, very difficult on them. I don't go to the nail salon just to get them painted because guess what? Getting them painted wouldn't solve my problem. It's not about the service, it's about solving my problem. I have to have shellac or else like we're gonna have some issues. But did I just go in saying, yes, I would love the $30 upsell for the shellac on my toes? No, they asked me questions. They did a consultation. They sold me on why shellac would solve my problem. Honey, you need shellac and then this won't happen. Your toes look busted. <laughs> they look awful, okay? This is what you need. It's about solving their problem, okay? Whenever I, and I, I'm not broke by any means. And still, when I go to the nail salon and I look at their menu of services, I gravitate towards basic manicure, basic pedicure, okay? Depending on their ability to sell me decides on that ending price. Sometimes I walk out spending $60 for a manicure and a pedicure. Sometimes I walk out spending 200. This last time I walked out spending two, spending, geez, tonight, the words, wow, spending 200 myself, just me on a mani-pedi. What was the difference between the time I spent 60 and the time I spent 200? Was it the money in my wallet? Nope. It was their ability to sell me on what I needed. It was their ability to solve my problem and share with me how they could do it in exchange for money. That is the basis of it all. This is one that's a huge eye opener for me. There was a previous person we used to work with who was like, Groupon just doesn't work. And I never wanna discount my services ever again. It's like, okay, tell me more about that. They said, 
we got 1,500 clients in off of Groupon. Not one person returned for a second service. At that point, I apologize for my French. I call bullshit because there is no way in hell 1,500 people would come in for a 50% off, let's call it service, and not one person would see the value in you in order to return, not one. One of two things happened. We either suck at our service or we suck at sales or both. But those are the only two options. It's not either or. It's not none of the above. It's not the clients are broke. Those clients were unhappy with the service we provided. Maybe a handful of them were broke. Let's even be generous and say half. But you can't tell me 1,500 people who came to see you are all broke. All cannot afford your full price service. That is the number one eye opener that it is not about the money. It is about the service and the ability to sell on your service. You can't just expect someone who came in at a discounted rate to turn back around and just think, oh yeah, I'll come in for full price next time. Great, and not hunt the next deal without you selling them on why you're worth the full price too. It all boils down to sales. It all boils down to sales. Jessica said, so true. The more money they have, the worse they are as a client. Yeah, the people with more money are actually the ones that come in more demanding. Waving their finger in your face. I want this service. Miss. Okay. All right. Little Miss Rude. Like, it's the people with the most money who usually come in the, the most demanding, okay? So those are the three myths about business that we got to get over first and foremost, okay? And if you've got any questions about these things, you can go ahead and pop them in the chat as we are going through this. But number one, build it and they will come. Complete and utter lie. You got to go make it happen. Build it and they will come is a lazy mentality. Two, my area is the reason why I'm not growing. Are there living, breathing people in your area? If the answer to that question is yes, then your area is not the reason you are not growing, okay? One in 10 people in the United States of America is a millionaire. One in 10 or one in 100, it's one or the other. If there's more than 100 people in your area, there's at least one millionaire in that area. There is a high, middle and lower class in every single area in America. Some might gravitate towards a lower class, some might gravitate towards a higher class, but there's a reason why even people in lower class neighborhoods still wear $200 shoes or still buy $300 belts and purses and all that stuff. Because it's about what is worth it to them. It's about what they feel solves their inner needs, okay? For example, my brother, God help him, he loves shoes, okay? Every Yeezy and Jordans and all that that I have no clue about what it even is, he loves them, okay? He had a job, he blew every ounce of that paycheck on them and then came crawling back complaining as to why he didn't have money in his account. And it's like, well, you just spent all of your money on that, okay? People do that because why? He thought that that would bring him status at school with his friends. He thought having those specific shoes would make his status at school higher with his friends. It's usually why people do it when it comes to the material things. You just have to prove why you're more important than that. Is getting this service, is solving this problem worth skipping the Starbucks this month? Is it worth, you know, skipping a few shopping trips this month? Is it worth, um, you know, maybe canceling that Netflix subscription or <laughs> whatever it is. You just have to convince them that you are more important than only one thing that they are spending money on that month. Just one, that's it. What questions do you guys have over this? Or what fears do you have surrounding jumping into sales yourself and understanding that you are a salesperson and what it looks like to start training in that? And what it looks like to have your team in that mentality around you every single day, to be in that sales mindset, to help other people in your area solve their problem. 
in exchange for money. What questions do you got? You go ahead and drop it down below. You guys are quiet tonight. I don't know if it's that Thanksgiving turkey. Your mouth is a little bit watery and waiting for it. <laughs> I don't mind it. I'm more of a ham person, but I'm real prepared for it, real ready for it. Um, but talk to me, you guys. What, what questions do you got? Um, Jessica said, how do I sell upper custom cool nail art? Well, for one, there is a specific market that would go towards that. I personally, I'm not a nail art kind of person, but somebody somewhere is. Somebody somewhere loves it. And that's just about introducing it into the conversation when you're about to do their nails. It's about talking with them about it. So when someone comes in, they're wanting to get their nails done. Awesome, what are you looking to get done today? Do you have any inspiration picks you wanna show me as something you'd like you'd like to get with it? You know, what kind of acrylics are you looking? What kind of shape are you looking for? Do you want any designs on it? Are you looking for any like sparkles or anything like that? It's about asking the questions for it. You know, what do you value in your nails? Do you value them being longer? Do you wanna make a statement with them or do you like them more, you know, blended into your everyday colors? I personally don't like to make a statement with my nails. I like them blending in with everything. But there's certainly a whole lot of people who do like to make statements with their nails. One of my friends from high school just got like every shade of purple going on with hers. I'm like, it's a little much for me, but girl, it looks cute on you, right? You have to introduce it into the conversation and ask them about it. Um, Jamie said, I live in a small farming rural community. I don't wanna look like I'm taking clients from other salons in town. We can't be fearful of stepping on other people's toes, honestly. I mean, if you're standing outside their salon handing out flyers, yeah, let's not do that, right? <laughs> that is trying to take salons directly from them. But utilizing local community pages just to start conversations with people who, you know, might be interested in your service or running a Facebook ad towards your local community or just utilizing your own social media profiles to share, you know, what you do or what problems you solve and things like that. Um, that's not stepping on anyone's toes. Someone choosing to come to you over another stylist or over another salon, it's not about stealing it. Maybe you are just the better fit for that client and you're doing them a disservice by not sharing with them that you can solve their problem because they may be sitting there unhappy because they don't know any better and they don't know another salon that can solve their problem in the area. Maybe they've never even heard of you. It is your responsibility to, the, to do the due diligence to make sure everyone in that small farming rural community knows who you are. Christina said, how do I sell products online? That all starts from what you do in the chair. That all starts from how you are handling those conversations in the chair. Your best way to get product sales is with that client right there in front of you. Jessica said, how do I get those people in my chair? That is all about stepping out in your local community and making sure that you are connecting with local people, okay? Now, obviously in the era of COVID, you know, there's not really gonna be a lot of big events you can go meet people at, but you can be utilizing things like local networking groups, local um, Facebook networking groups in order to connect with those people. There's loads of trainings on that. If you'll just hashtag elite down below, I can have one of my assistants reach out to you and hook you up um, with one of those trainings over kind of how to utilize those local Facebooking groups in order to, Facebooking groups. Y'all, words are, are leaving me tonight. Just, it's not working out, okay? Words and me just not happening we can hook you up with some resources. So just hashtag elite down below and one of my assistants will reach out to you. Tara said, I'm struggling to get my team on board with the mindset. Ooh, I love it. My top performers are no problem. My lower performers will not budge on giving the value add because they view it as a discount. Um, <laughs> this is just the, the obvious thing right here. They're the lowest performers. They are the lowest performers who are scared to give a quote unquote discount. There's a reason why you're the lowest performer and you shouldn't be so shy about saying that, okay? One thing that we do with our team is we have every single person who is in a sales related position, all of their numbers are public to our entire team. 
how many sales you have made for the entire month, how many appointments that you've had for the entire month, all of that information, even down to what retail you were doing for the entire month. You should have a leaderboard so because the lowest performers should know that they're the lowest performers. It should be obvious. It shouldn't be something you know internally. It should be something on a leaderboard that everyone knows because that is what will get them to step it up. Our lowest performers, they, they know they're the lowest. So instead of making excuses, they know they can't make an excuse to me as far as what, you know, why they don't want to do it. Oh, I don't like doing that or anything like that. I don't hear jack crap from that anymore. They are constantly trying to model what the highest performers are doing so that they can operate at that level because we know who's the lowest and we know who's the highest because it's made public to the whole team. We go over it in team meetings. Everybody knows. So that's what I would recommend for you is definitely make sure that you kind of have a leaderboard for your team based off several different metrics, whether it be um, appointments on the books, like appointments completed, revenue generated from them, retail sales, um, retail units, any of those things. Um, have a leaderboard, I'm telling you, changes lives. Vlad said he 100% agrees. Ebony said absolutely right. Vlad said out of 10, when it comes to product sales, I'm more like an eight and 8.5. Why do we feel like we're an eight and an 8.5, Vlad? Um, so when it comes to, to product sales and things like that, almost it should be a no brainer for clients who come to see you to be purchasing product for you. And it all comes from you setting the expectation. A lot of times we like to kind of, you know, display the product nicely and try to have it almost like a Walmart like where they can just go pick whatever off the shelf and then go like, oh yeah, I want this shampoo, I want this, I want that. Retail sales should not be like a Walmart where they go pick something off a shelf. It should be a fluid conversation with you making a recommended, <laughs> but I said, okay, I'll try for a 10, you do that, absolutely. It should be a fluid conversation of you with them just talking about their needs and what they want and what problems that they're experiencing at home with their hair right now. Me personally, like six months ago, I was dealing with an itchy scalp. It was itching, it was flaky, it was awful, it was nasty. I would do anything to solve it. Guess what? I was using crappy shampoo. <laughs> like Problem solved in one swift thing, but all it took was my hairstylist saying, girlfriend, you got a little bit of dandruff going on here. What is the problem? Okay, don't be afraid to point out things that are wrong with your client's hair. Because me personally, as a client, I would rather my stylist point it out than someone else on the street notice. Someone next to me on a bus, behind me in a movie theater, someone behind me in line. I would rather my hairstylist point it out and fix it versus someone else in public noticing it, right? What if you're on a date and, you know, it's your first date ever and some guy notices you have really crappy dandruffy hair. That's a problem, right? <laughs> Huge problem. I would much, much rather my stylist point it out to me before. You don't have to do it like, oh my God, you have dandruff. Obviously, like, let's steer clear of that tonality. But, you know, I'm noticing a little bit of flakiness going on with the scalp here. Just wondering, what shampoo are you using at home? You know, are you using a dry shampoo? I learned last week that that's a terrible thing to do. Figured that out. Whoops, because I use that all the time. Um, but like asking them what they're using at home, pointing out the problem and things like that. That will always yield more retail sales. Additionally, key tip, if you want to stop them from price shopping on their phone while you're going through the retail, put the retail products, put multiple of them in their hands, have them have their phone down, put their products in their hands. So they're focused on the product itself while you're talking about it and not the price of the product and shopping it. Cool. Um, let's see. Ebony said key right there, the lowest performers. Exactly. I can tell you from an experience recently that the lowest performers are always going to have the most to complain about. And it's because they're struggling. They know they're the lowest performers and there's a reason why they are there, right? But the only way in order to make them achieve more and to make them perform higher is to suffocate the fact that they are performing low 
And not just in reference to themselves, but in reference to everyone else on the team. Uh, let's see, Christina said, what do you mean people in the chair? I have no problem selling products in person when they come to look for a problem to solve. I mean, how to do like a holiday sale online who is not my clients yet. Um, that really, that's more of like e-commerce. We don't really um, do much of that. You can send an email blast to an email list. In regards to it, usually things like um, Facebook ads and stuff like that aren't good for lower ticket sales. Um, the other thing would be making ask posts on your Facebook page or in Facebook groups to people who are not currently clients. Um, just kind of gauging towards that problem that they have. You know, what's your your favorite kind of hair product? You know, what is your go-to hair product to have smooth hair? Those types of things and then recommending what you've got. Um, kind of just things in that nature. But again, the best way to sell retail is to do it in your chair. Um, unless you are shut down, I probably wouldn't even put a focus on trying to do a big holiday online sale. It creates a lot of work that you don't um, necessarily need to be doing, I would focus on the clients in the chair. Um, Vlad said he sells them a scalp detox. Heck yeah. Melissa said I pointed out a mole that needed to be removed and was abnormal. Exactly. I read one thing online where, um, a woman's nail had some discoloration and her nail tech pointed it out. She went, found out it was cancer, got it taken care of and was good to go. Like, saved her life and all that stuff. Like pointing things out in your clients should not be a taboo. Should not be something that you shy away from for fear of offending them or anything like that. You should be real with your clients because you are there to solve their problems in regards to that thing. If I went to go see a doctor and I had an abnormal mole on my arm, it'd be one of the first things out of their mouth. Like, okay, I know you're here because you're feeling like fluish and whatever, but what is this, right? Or what if they see like a giant like cyst on my neck? Like they're not just gonna not say anything. If they don't say anything, they're a terrible doctor because that could be a serious medical issue, right? If they're seeing that all my eyebrows have fallen off, they're probably gonna say something. Why? Because it could be early onset signs of something else. You have to be that expert for your clients. We just kind of got over that aspect in the very beginning of this meeting where you guys have spent thousands on thousands on thousands on thousands on thousands of dollars to be an expert in your space, right? To know all that you know, which is amazing and wonderful, but what is all this knowledge if we don't get to use it? And the basis of getting to use it is convincing the clients that we can solve their problems utilizing this knowledge. Um, Tala said, I was away for 10 months of the job and I don't know where to start again in this COVID. Gotcha. Um, there's plenty of people exploding their businesses right now during COVID. I'm just gonna be dead honest. First and foremost, have a space to get clients. Secondly, um, you can 100% utilize the units section of this program and walk through all of those trainings. It'll tell you what you need to know to get clients. Honestly, I'm a little surprised that we even do it for free, but it's all over there and it is some kick butt trainings. Like you will walk away with new clients if you just go to the units tab of this group and take those trainings. If you want a little more guidance over what training might be more useful for you, um, you can hashtag elite down below and one of my assistants will reach out. They'll guide you towards whether it be free or paid resources that can help you achieve that goal. Um, but 100% just hashtag elite down below and we can guide you as well. Christina said, thank you. You're welcome. Tala said, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Priscilla said units meaning modules. So for the free group, which is what we're in right now, there is a unit section in the group towards the left hand side. Um, however, we do have um, a program called Roby D Bosses Elite in which we have modules. Um, if you want more information over Elite, which Woohoo! We are going through an upgrade and we're getting totally new content before the end of the year, which is amazing. Um, hashtag elite down below and I can hook you up. Um, Sherry said, I have helped clients find skin cancer on their scalp, back of their ears, helped someone from losing their foot when doing a pedicure, and help domestic violence clients. See? You do so much more than just a service. 110%. You pointing out something, again, it doesn't even always have to be in related to sell, sell things. You can 100% be pointing out something that could save someone's life. 
You never know. You never know. Point everything out that you see that could be abnormal, okay? Just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, what time do we have on here? We got about 15 minutes left. If you guys have any additional questions, you can go ahead and pop them down below. I'm gonna do a quick recap of what we went over tonight, um, and then we will say our goodbyes. If you have any final questions, drop them down below um, so that I can get them answered for you. Um, the topic of tonight was the number one thing that your cosmetology school did not teach you that will unlock your key to success as a salon and spa professional. That number one thing is sales, okay? Sales is business, and we can no longer be fearful of being salesy or selling our clients on things, okay? Because that is the gateway to finding success in what we do. That is the gateway to finding success in our business, okay? That is the gateway to making your income goals a reality. We can have all of the training and all the expertise in the world, but if we lack the ability to sell our clients on our value, on our service and on our worth, we will still fail at the end of the day, okay? Sales is number one. There are additionally three myths related to this topic that I just wanna blast out. First and foremost, build it and they will come, screw that. It's a lazy way of thinking, we gotta go get the clients, okay? Can't just open your doors, sit there, twiddle your thumbs and go, why in the world do I not have clients, right? We gotta go get them. Number two, my area is the reason I'm not growing. There are living, breathing human beings in your area. Your area is not the reason you are not growing. Cool. Additionally to that, I just thought of this. Veronica, one of our account managers, she drives almost two hours to get her hair done. She drives almost two hours to get her hair done. When I lived in Phoenix, I drove about 30, 45 minutes to get my hair done. Okay. You are not confined just to your small little block. And I know that's a lot of times what we think, like, oh, you know, my clients won't drive to me. I just gotta, like, it's just this one area that I'm confined to. I can't get clients from other areas. No, not true. You can 100% be getting clients from other areas, from other nearby towns, from anything like that. So don't feel like you're just confined to this one tiny area. Um, and then the last one, everyone is a discount shopper. No, they are not. Everyone is a human. Humans utilize money as a resource to secure the means of survival things like food, water, and shelter. Money is the gateway to those things. Therefore, we, as human beings, are not f naturally frivolous with our money. We are naturally restrictive to money. We are naturally hoarding money, right? We naturally want to keep money to ourselves. We only spend it when we know that it is going to yield us a higher dollar value than what that money actually is, right? Exactly. So no one is a discount shopper. The richest people in the world still will settle for a discount, okay? Just look at the t-shirts that Bill Gates wears. <laughs> it's like Hanes. Like why is the richest person in the world wearing Hanes? Because he's not gonna go blow all his cash, right? He didn't get rich by blowing all his cash. Neither did whoever is in your area, right? Um, there are also people who are technically lower class or whatever you wanna call it, who spend hundreds on thousands of dollars on just material things like shoes, like Christmas, like iPhones. Okay. I've, I've rarely met a person who is classified as broke or below the poverty line or a discount shopper, et cetera, that doesn't have an iPhone. iPhones are now like a thousand dollars every time they come out. There are people I know who literally live paycheck to paycheck and have the new iPhone as soon as it comes out. Why? Because having that is important to them. So you just have to sell them on the fact that having your service is also important to them and solves their problem and will achieve what they want out of everything, okay? So those are the three myths that you just gotta get out of your head, okay? I don't wanna hear those excuses anymore. <laughs> I want you to lock them in a box, throw them away, and take full responsibility over your business because the sooner you take full responsibility over your ability to sell your clients and your ability to solve their problem, um, there, there is no limit to what you can achieve. There's no limit to what you can do, especially if you are wanting to grow and be a go-to person in your space. No one is the go-to person in their area, in their local area, because they only serve a certain type of client. No one is. Because they only wanna serve the soccer moms with corporate, level husbands or whatever, okay? That's like 10 people, right? 
But when you can open up the gateway to serve a lot of people and ensure that you are serving people based off of the problem they have, not your perceived version of what class they are in, you will take the cap off of the, um, the income that you can make, of how big you can grow as a local business and on how fast you can grow as well. Okay, so just keep those things in mind. Um, Vlad said, can you come to NYC? That might be a little far for getting my hair done. Plus, I will say, I do have Igor and Carolyn right down here in Florida who rock. So, shout out to Igor and Carolyn. <laughs> um, but definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, Melissa said, number one, sales. Number two, build relationships. Number three, sell them on your worth. Number four, solve their problem. Should be an organic, fluid conversation as to what they need. No limits. You're welcome, babe. Um, all right, guys. That's all I have for you tonight. Like I said throughout this training, if you caught anything that I said or a resource that I mentioned or a strategy that I mentioned, and you're like, I want more info on that. I want to learn a little bit more about that. You can hashtag elite down below and one of my um, reps, one of my uh, assistants will reach out to you. Um, guide you towards any resources you need, again, whether it be free ones or paid ones to ensure that you are set up for success. My number one goal in showing up here every single week for you guys is just to ensure that you achieve a result, okay? If you walk away scoring even one new client from these live, from these lives, these words tonight, you guys, <laughs> then I have done my job right, okay? then I have done what I needed to do to help you at least move a little bit further in your business. It's my number one goal. So use the resources, hashtag elite down below. Let my, rep, or let my assistant reach out to you so that we can get you the help you need and the guidance you need to get there. Um, and with that said, last thing, you guys, attendance. We've taken a little bit of a dip this week. I'm gonna give y'all the benefit of the doubt and call it a Thanksgiving fluke, but... You will only continue to grow if you continue to show up for yourself, okay? You have to be showing up to these resources. I'm here every single week. Every single week, I'm here for you. I'm here to ensure that you have at least one more strategy, at least one more tool in your arsenal, at least one more yelling session from Katie to achieve a result. But you have to meet me halfway and show up too, okay? So if you're on here or if you're catching the replay, I want you to go mark off on your calendar Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time because that is when I am here showing up for you. But you got to show up for me too, okay? You got to meet me halfway. You got to show up, you got to listen, and then you got to put in the work after. Cool? So I'm holding every single one of you accountable to that. We should never dip this low on attendance again, okay? I'm going to just say that. Cool. <laughs> With that said, you guys, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. Don't forget to hashtag elite down below if you have any resources that you want help with or just want a little extra guidance. We have got you. We are here for you. Tala said you gave me hope tonight. Girlfriend, you got this. There is no doubt in my mind. Okay. You have got this. You will kick butt. You will take names and you will grow a successful salon or spa business for yourself. That is a fact. I'm speaking it over you. I'm speaking it over every single one of you. Um, last little announcement is that actually, I know I said I'm here for you every single week. I'm here for you 99.999% of weeks. But next week, unfortunately, I will be on a plane <laughs> during this time. So next week will be canceled, but we will resume the following week after that. So just keep that in mind. With that said, I will talk to you all soon. Kick butt the rest of your week and eat lots and lots of ham and mac and cheese for me because it's my favorite Thanksgiving dishes. Bye, you guys.